Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today is a very special day because we are going to start off a new journey together and that's going to be on Python. So I'm really excited for this and uh, this is going to be completely visualization based and if you ask me what else is different in this because we will be discussing all the modules and topics that we want for Python and everything that you see here will be visualization based so that you can learn and you can grasp them very easily as I'm going to design it this way. So I'm really hoping for the best and uh, two episodes are already out on the channel. So if you haven't checked them out, please do so. And uh, please let me know how you feel about that. So if you think it was good or bad, or if you have any suggestions or something that you want to give me, then please you can go ahead and give me on the comment section below. And if you did like it, please hit the like button, share it and do subscribe. Okay, so let's go and watch the first episode. So as this is the first episode, let us get ourselves introduced with some concepts that are very important and everyone who wants to learn a new language should be aware of it. And as I already said, our motto here is to learn once and never forget. So please watch the whole video to get the wholesome experience. Okay, so this all started with the creator of Python, Guido Van Rossum, when he decided to create a Python programming language as a project and it was a successor of the ABC language and this got materialized and released in 1991. And Python is termed to be a high level language and is told to be a general purpose language. So what general purpose programming language means is that it's not constant for a specific requirement or purpose. It can be widely used across multiple widespread application domains. And when we speak of it being a high level language, remember that high level languages are something that are very close to human readable languages, which has a easy readable syntax, understandability and is much more intuitive to grasp. And the extension of this comes as a major advantage of using Python, which makes the code to be easily readable. It is as well dynamically typed and this comes with the concept of type checking where we have to understand what type checking actually means. Here what dynamically typed actually means is that the type of variable check is done at the runtime rather than at the compile time. Okay, don't worry about this. We will discuss this in a short while. So keep watching. And another important aspect of Python is that it has an inbuilt garbage collection. It implements support for procedural programming, object oriented and functional programming as well. So you can be sure of doing a lot of things with Python. Okay, so the first version of Python 2 was released back in October 2000 and the one which we will be working on in this particular series, that is our Python 3 that got released in December 2008. So now that we have discussed the basics of Python and its good parts, let's jump into the concepts which make up a programming language. So as I've already mentioned, Python is a high level programming language and is more prioritized to be a human readable form. But having said that, machines may not just accurately understand what a human readable language might be. So it must be converted into a low level machine readable form that is called the low level language. And that is basically done by our compilers. Yes, compilers are the sort of computer program that translates computer code that is written in one programming language that is called the source language into another low level language that is the target language and that is done by converting your source program to either an assembly language object code or machine code so which can create a machine executable instruction based program which will in turn give you the output you want and there are various steps that take place to accomplish the task so let's see what they are so you have the source program here which the compiler transforms into individual units called lexemes using the lexical analysis which then is taken to analyze the syntax to make sure you have written it in the way the language wants you to use the syntax. Okay and then what happens is it is transformed to the binary tree data structure called the AST or what we also call as the abstract syntax tree using the semantic analyzer post which we generate the intermediate code which is later optimized using the machine independent code optimizer and based on which we generate the code and then we put it back to the machine dependent code optimizer using the three address code pattern and finally you have the target code or the machine readable instruction which can be fed to the machine to process here is the happy machine that we have 
feed me i'll process this he's saying so once you have the target code you can feed it to the machine so that it can deliver the output so this surely was a lot of information but don't worry we'll discuss them in depth one by one so if you're ready let's move on so before moving to the deep concepts let's see two things that i want you guys to understand i know many of you might be aware of it but what's the harm in learning isn't it i hope all of you are aware of the keywords and identifiers but if you are not then don't worry we'll discuss this so let's see the visualization here so keywords are the reserve words that every programming language provides to its programmers to use them in turn which helps the compiler to understand the program while compilation for example if you're using a if loop the word that you see if is basically a keyword so if you use a for loop the word for is a keyword okay i hope you got that and identifiers on the other hand are the unique names you provide to the variable or function that you want for it to be named okay so let's see the example here so we have the sample program here where we are defining a function and we are comparing two values x and y and we are printing the result based on that so here what python tells us that is if you want to define a function you have to add a keyword def and then you have to provide the name of the function that you want and you have to assign the parameters it depends on the program itself okay so here what happens is the def that you see here this is basically the keyword and the check underscore sample the name that i gave to the program and the function itself is basically the identifier okay so when we see this in a visualized manner so if you see the def that i have here color that you see here all the matching patterns that the color has all these are keywords okay def if print else okay and the other one that we have check underscore sample is basically your identifier which basically identifies that check underscore sample is the name of the function so this is a small example of how different keywords and identifiers are okay lexical analysis as this is the first step for compilers listen to this very carefully okay so lexical analysis is basically a process where we can convert the program that you have written using the high level language like python or java from a sequence of characters to a sequence of tokens and the tokens are basically the single individual element of the program that you have written so that basically can be the identifiers or the keywords see i explained you this just now or this can be as small as your comma or curly braces or even simple brackets okay so this process that does it and the program that basically performs it is called either a lexer or a parser or a scanner or a tokenizer so the parser that you see here what the parser does it takes the input in the form of sequence of tokens or program instructions and usually builds a data structure in the form of a parser tree which is then used by the semantic analysis so the lexer passes the token to the parser that is used for the syntax analysis and gets traversed and stored in the symbol table okay this is a symbol table and once it processes the token it gets a new one from the analyzer itself okay so here what you need to remember is that the lexical analyzer breaks the program to the tokens and then feeds it to the parser to consume and to create the syntax analysis and the binary tree and then once it's done it asks for the next one this is not the only thing that lexical analysis is helpful for it helps us with removing white spaces and comments from the source program and it also helps us analyze syntactical errors okay so as you know the white spaces and the comments actually don't play any role in the program execution so they can be eliminated and that step is taken by the lexical analyzer so i hope this was informative let's move on so let's see an example here so we have our sample program here this is a single line program so my value is equal to num1 plus num2 plus num3 multiplied by num4 so when you feed it to the interpreter what happens here is when it goes through the lexical analyzer it produces a single individual entity that is called the token or lexemes which is then sent to the semantic analysis once you have passed it through the lexical analysis it creates the lexemes and this is basically passed to the semantic analysis so let's see what semantic analysis has to offer so before semantic analysis there is one more step that we use to analyze the syntax which is basically a syntax analysis so here in syntax analysis what happens is the token that was generated in the previous step are taken and, and structured together to form an abstract syntax tree okay so let's see the structure that gets generated 
So you have your num1 plus num2 plus num3 into num4. So the plus operation takes place first, 12 plus 5. Then the multiplication into 44 and then the plus again. So this is the example of the basic expression tree that gets generated. And Python actually follows a PEDMAS pattern that is basically parenthesis, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. Okay, so this basically decides the approach at which the operation should be executed. So here, if there is no syntax errors, then it moves forward to the semantic analysis. So let's check that out now. So here what happens is the analyzer checks for the type of variables that we have and the operation that we are going to perform or basically the operators. So it basically checks that if it is an integer or string or boolean and does the program actually allows executing that operation that you want to perform. Okay, let's suppose the programming language that you have uh, and that you're working on doesn't allow integers to be multiplied with strings unlike Python, then it will raise the exception here. Okay, unlike Python where you can multiply strings with the integers where it will duplicate the same string again and again until the number uh, ends. So if you see here, the compiler is able to identify which is the identifier and which is the operator. And if you saw the symbol table before, symbol table actually helps us to identify if the variable was defined or not. So in Python what happens is if there are two variables with the same name, so what it does is the second variable that you have will override the value of the first variable that was already defined. Okay, so let's suppose you define a equal to 5, later on in the program you change it like a equal to 20, the latest value for a will be 20. After that, all the operations that take place will use a's value as 20 itself. Okay. And one more example that I want to give you is like, so let's suppose you are writing a program and there is a variable that you printed with a typo. So the program identifies if the variable exists or not. So what did we learn here? Semantic analysis helps us with the type checking and helps us to determine what type of variable it is or what type of operator it is and basically the symbol table management. Okay, so I hope that was easy to understand. If not, then put your queries in the comment section below. Okay, I'll try to answer them. So let's move on. So now we have reached to a very important concept. So once we have our tree ready, don't worry about the tree data structure right now. I'll make a separate video on this. So once you have the tree, it is translated to a three address code, which is used to generate the intermediate code. So three address code that you see here is basically an assignment where you can perform operations on variables using any operator like plus or minus or exponent or multiplication and it can be assigned to a particular value using the assignment operator or it can be just a plain simple assignment okay so three address code one two three or it can be a single assignment as well and the next step that it does is it basically optimizes the three address code and then it generates the low level code so here if you see here carefully so the three address code that you see here what it does is it sums up 44 plus 65 then assigns the value to tag 1 and uh, does a multiplication of 12 into 5 and assigns it to tag 2 and the tag 3 value that you have is basically tag 2 minus tag 1 and tag 4 is basically 15 plus tag 3 and in the fifth one that you have we assign a dummy variable IDA to tag 4 okay but now if you want to optimize it further what the optimizer does is it changes the value it changes the variable that you have, the dummy variable, the tag4 that you have directly to IDA so that we eliminate this step. So we have optimized this structure to four steps now from five steps. Okay. And that is how it optimizes the number of operation that it has to perform. And then it generates a low level code. And then we have our low level code that is basically fed to the processor. Okay. So I hope it was easy to understand. Let's move on. So now that we have discussed on how the compiler works, let's summarize it in a high level. So compilers are a sort of computer program that translates computer code that is written in one programming language that is the source language into another low level language that is a target language and that is done by converting your source program to either an assembly language or an object code or machine code which can create a machine executable instruction based program which will in turn give you the output you want. Okay, so you have your source program here which the compiler transforms it into individual units called lexemes using the lexical analysis which is then taken to the analyze the syntax and to make sure you have written it in a way that the language wants you to use the syntax and then it's transformed to the binary tree or the binary tree data structure called the AST 
or the abstract syntax tree using the semantic analyzer post which we generate the intermediate code which is later optimized using the machine independent code optimizer and based on which we generate the code and then we put it back to the machine dependent code optimizer using the three address code pattern and finally you have your optimized code that is translated to the target code or the machine readable instruction which can be fed to the machine to process so i'm stressing and repeating things again and again because i want you to learn this very carefully and i want you to remember this and make sure you never forget okay so basically i'm stressing this because it is really important and it's a base of all the programming languages that you want to learn so the structure will be similar so when you have a proper understanding of this one you can learn any language and understand the depths of what actually it is built on okay so now let's see and learn how does an interpreter work hmm. so this is how the compilers work isn't it and we learned a lot of information in this episode so if you want to watch more please make sure that you have subscribed to the channel okay because i don't want you to miss out on any episodes that i post so I'll meet you in the next episode of Pythonic. Until then, signing off.